Of the drugs that are available right now, right? So, so there's a, a number of drugs like rapamycin and metformin are kind of the game ones. Do you have, which one do you think shows the most promise? You know, I, I almost feel like I'm not qualified to, to, okay. to answer that. I mean, it's terrific to see all the, the clinical um, uh, trials going on with rapamycin, for example. It's great to hear about the, the TAME trial with metformin, which is, is yet to emerge. Um, I think it's a natural progression of the field that this is the kind of activities that are going on. It's fantastic. Um, but, but, but putting my money on something right now, I, I need, I need to, I guess I'm one of those, I need to wait for the double blind clinical trial, you know, to, to, to see what's, what's going on there. Now I will say this, I think that interventions that we know target aging processes have incredible potential. Mm. And, and, and so, so and, and we know that rapamycin and metformin have, have a track record in reducing aging pathologies and in some cases increasing lifespan, for example, like rapamycin in the mouse. I put a lot of stock in that, but, but um, I also feel like we need, we need like 100 rapamycins and 100 metformins, uh, and we don't have that right now. We don't have a vast array of chemical interventions or potential drugs that are, are targeting aging and uh, maybe the, the ones that, that will make it into humans and do great things in the future. I don't think we have the pipeline developed yet. Interesting. Yes. So if you're doing, if you're already doing like the right things, right, you're doing intermittent fasting, you're doing, uh, you're eating well and you're doing exercise. Do you think that these, these drugs will help? It, it, yeah. That's a super question. I mean, if, if you're already at some sort of optimal for your, your biology and your physiology, are these things going to help? And one thing my Simon, Simon Mello, my colleague at the Buck, reminds me of is that uh, the exercise is, is much more effective at treating diabetes than metformin is. Uh, I think it's something like 40% um, metformin uh, compared to, to exercise. And that's that makes you stop, right? That makes you think, well, really, if we're doing everything well, would, would these compounds or, or drugs have any beneficial effect? Um, it's not clear. I think we, I think we need, those experiments need to be done. And actually it raises the question is, what, how, do you, how do you do optimality in the lab? I mean, we know in the lab that we're overfeeding our animals for the most mm. part. Almost all experiments are, are, are done on animals that are overfed. Why aren't we doing experiments on aging on caloric restricted animals that are already doing well and look for interventions that can make them even better? Right. So I, I do have a little diversion here. So they, they you talk about uh, mice having uh, ad libitum, right? So whatever uh -huh. they want to eat, right? Yeah. So if you gave a, like a human whatever he wanted to eat, right, and you just put it, he'd probably eat too much. Like, do mice have some mechanism that they say, okay, like I've had enough, I'm going to stop? Or do they just keep eating? <laughs> well, we know that humans do. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That was yeah. my point. Yes. Yeah, no, it, 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 but I mean, clearly, um, uh, you know, work by Sachin and Panda and others have, have really emphasized just how frequently we're eating and, and the potential downsides of that. I mean, with, with the mouse, the very fact that the, the, their entire fundamental metabolism and life history changes when they reduce the calories suggests that they're eating too much, that they're eating beyond their, you know, that society is, is not sufficient to give them the benefits that they could have if they didn't eat as much. Right. So, yeah, so we should really feed them less, give them a wheel, and then also give them metformin and see what happens. Yeah, and, and you know, so I'm, I'm sure if those experiments haven't been done, someone's doing them right now because I think it's a critical question. Uh, and and, and I, 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 I do think that we need to think about um, what, what are we doing in the lab, uh, not just the diets, but even this, the model systems themselves that we work in, you know, yeast, Drosophila, and mouse, mainly lab adapted. Mm. And we, I think we always have to ask the question. Actually, I believe the answer to this question is that we're okay. But we do need to ask the question, are we curing something that has simply arose because of lab, uh, you know, culturing, lab adaption? Uh, I, th I think that's always important to ask. Are we simply curing something that's occurred because we've had these animals for tens of, you know, generations, hundreds of generations in the lab?
Right. Yes. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.